Praise the Lord. Buana Sifiwe. Amen. It's good to see you this afternoon. You are welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. We, even as we begin our lunch hour, we, I want us also to welcome the online church. Let them also join us and be blessed together with us. Amen. Like, share, tag a friend, and I believe you are also going to be blessed in today's lunch hour. Even as we begin, I want us to just turn to our Bibles in the book of Psalms 102. Is the scripture we have used over this week. Psalms 102 verse number 13. The Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yet the set time is come. Amen. It is our time to receive the favor of God. It's the time that God needs to favor us, to favor our families, to favor us even in our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. So even as you have come for today's lunch, I want you to just go before the Lord. That Lord, even as, as we finish this week, I ask that you may invoke your favor upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you need the mercy of God to move forward, may God move you forward by his mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us just go ahead in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you, we give you glory, and we give you praise. We exalt you because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the lamp upon the throne. Besides you, there is none. Almighty Jehovah God. Father, we commit today's lunch hour unto you able hands. We ask even as we begin that Lord you may begin with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Abu Zakara Bakunta Riba Zanta Raba Bazaya Rike Bebe Zanta Raba Kunta Riba Zanta Raba Bazaya Rikunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zanta Raba Bazaya Take over this lunch our Almighty Jehovah God Take over our prayers Take over our praises my God Take over our worship Almighty King of Glory Take over the ministration Almighty Jehovah God Rima Kunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zanta Raba Bazaya Rike Bebe Zanta Makunta Riba Zanta Raba Bazaya Rikunta Riba zanta mando robo zanta rababa zaya Rike bebe zanta raba kunta rababa zaya We ask that you may do a new thing in our lives this afternoon In the mighty name of Jesus makunta raba zaya Rike bebe shaka raba kunta riba zanta rababa zaya Rikunta riba zanta mando robo zanta rababa zaya Rike bebe zanta mando robo zanta rababa zaya Rikunta riba zanta mando robo zanta rababa zaya Above all we desire your presence to be with us In the mighty name of Jesus for without your presence uh, we are nothing almighty king of glory rima kunta riba zanta manto robo zaya rike bebe zanta raba kunta raba bazaya rikunta riba zanta manto robo zanta raba bazaya rike bebe zanta makunta raba bazaya rikunta riba zanta manto robo zanta raba bazaya rikanta raba kunta let your presence my god uh, distinguish us almighty jehovah god uh, rima kunta riba zanta manto robo zaya rike bebe zanta let your presence my god uh, transform our lives almighty king of glory rima kunta riba zanta manto robo zaya rike bebe zanta direct us my god uh, by your presence almighty king of glory rima kunta riba zanta manto robo zaya rike bebe zanta makunta raba zanta raba zaya he say in your word almighty jehovah god uh, thou shall arise my god uh, and have mercy upon zion almighty jehovah for the time to favor her has come uh, the set time has come almighty king of glory we pray in this season, Almighty Jehovah God, Rima Kunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zaya. As we seek you in the place of prayer, Jehovah God, as we seek you in fasting, Almighty King of Glory, as we seek you in your word, Almighty Jehovah God, that you shall remember mercy upon our lives and favor us in this season, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Makunta Rabazaya, Rekebebe Zanta Mando Rabazaya, Rekunta Rabazanta Rabakunta Rabazaya, Rekebebe Shaka Rabakunta Rabazaya, Rekunta Rabazanta by your mercies, my God. May Move us forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Rima Kunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zaya. Rike Bebe Zanta by your mercies, my God. May we lift every judgment from our lives, my God. May we lift every judgment from our families. May we lift every judgment from the nation of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, Manto Raba Zaya. Rikunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zaya. It says, Because of your mercy, my God, that we are not consumed, Almighty Jehovah God. And that we pray for your mercy to speak for our sake. To Speak on our behalf, Almighty King of Glory. Rima Kunta Riba Zanta Manto Raba Zaya. Rike Bebe Zanta Raba Kunta Raba Zaya. Rikunta Riba Zanta. Somebody pray for the mercy of God. Let him speak for your for your sake. Let him speak on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That the mercy of God shall speak on behalf of your family. That the mercy of God shall speak on behalf of the nation of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus Manto Raba Zaya. Rike Bebe Zanta Raba Kunta Raba Zaya. Rikunta Riba Zanta. Zanta manto robo zaya, rike bebe zanta manto robo zaya, rima kanta raba kunta raba zaya, rikunta riba zanta raba kuriya, rima kanta raba zinta raba zaya, rima kanta raba kunta raba zaya, rikunta riba zanta manto robo zaya, rike bebe zanta raba kunta raba zaya. Let your mercy speak on our behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus, manto robo zaya, rima kanta raba zinta raba zaya, rikunta riba zanta manto robo zaya, rike bebe zanta. Somebody I want you to pray by the mercy of God uh, that he may bring us to the place of rest uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Mantora Bazaya. Pray for rest in the mighty name of Jesus. Rima Kantara Bazantara Bazaya. Rekebebe Zantara Bakuntara Bazaya. By your mercy, Jehovah God, uh, bring us to the place of rest, my God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rima Kantara Bakuntara Bazaya. Rima Kantara Bazantara Bakuria. Rekuntariba Zanta Mantora Bazaya. Rekebebe Saka Mandora Bazaya. 
Abo shakara ba konta ra ba ba zaya, rima konta ra ba zanta ra ba zaya, rikonta ra ba zanta manta ra ba zaya, rekebe zanta ra ba konta ra ba zaya. Is there any word of my Lord Jehovah God? There remaineth rest, my God. For the people of God Almighty, King of Glory, rima konta ra ba zanta bring us, my God, to the place of rest, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, manta ra ba zaya, rekebe ba zanta manta ra ba zaya. Rest in word of life, central door at my God. Rest over the sons and daughters, my God, of this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Rest over the works of our hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rima kanta raba zanta raba zaya. Rekebe zanta raba konta raba zaya. Rima kanta manta raba zaya. Rekonta raba zanta manta raba zaya. Somebody, I want you to pray that the Lord will satisfy you only with His mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May He quicken that which concerns you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He say in your word, Almighty Jehovah God. Rima kanta raba konta raba zaya. Rekebe be zanta. You will satisfy satisfy us, Ali, my God, with your mercy, Almighty Jehovah God. That we may rejoice, Almighty Jehovah God, all our days, Almighty King of Glory. Rima konta raba zanta. Manta raba zaya. We pray in this season, my God, may satisfy us, Ali, my God, with your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus, manta raba zaya. Rima kanta raba konta raba zaya. Rekebe be zanta. Manta raba zaya. Wherever you have been delayed, I want you to. Pray this afternoon uh, that God is quickening that which concerns you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rima kanta manta raba zaya. Let there be a quickening by your spirit uh, upon our lives, Almighty Jehovah God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rima kanta raba zanta raba zaya. Rekebe be zanta raba kuriya. Rekonta raba zanta manta raba zaya. Rekebe be shaka manta raba zaya. Rima kanta quicken my God uh, that which concerns us, Almighty Jehovah God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, manta raba was I here? As the praise and worship come, I want you to pray that let the beauty of the Lord be seen upon my life. Pray for the beauty of the Lord to be seen upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Rima kanta raba zanta raba zaya, Rima kanta raba konta raba zaya. Let the beauty of the Lord be seen upon our lives. Ma konta raba zanta manta raba zaya. Let the beauty of the Lord be seen upon our families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the beauty Beauty of the Lord be seen over the nation of Kenya. Father, we ask for your beauty, my God, to be seen upon word of life, sent El Dorita. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Rima kanta raba zanta raba zaya, rekebe be shaka raba kunta raba zaya. Somebody just lift up your hands and just begin to worship the Lord. Begin to give Him glory. Begin to give Him praise. Begin to exalt His name. In the mighty name of Jesus, manta raba zaya, rekebe be shaka manta raba zaya. Lift up your hands and just worship Him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, lift your hands and worship our God. He is a faithful God. The word of the Lord says that enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. That's why we want to thank the Lord this afternoon. We want to thank him because he has been a faithful God. His grace has been sufficient in our lives. He has been with us. This is a new month. We are entering. It's a new season. We are praying that his masses will be with us. And that's why we thank him in advance. He has been a faithful God. Ni obwana tunasema ni asante. Kwa yote umetenda bwana ni asante. Kwa wokovu ambao umetupa bwana. Kwa damu yako bwana ni asante. Kwa uhai siku ya leo bwana ni asante. Oh ni asante bwana. Mwambie bwana ni asante. Asante bwana. Kwa yote bwana tunashukuru bwana. Kwa
that you make available we are in the close of the week we thank you we thank you because of the new month we thank you for the expectations that you have assigned for us that will not be cut short we thank you because as we have been waiting on you that God you are fulfilling things that we have prayed over 
you are the way maker you are the door opener you possess the keys of david the door you open no man can shut the door you shut no man can be able to open so we pray shut some doors doors that the enemy may try to work against us shut them completely let not affliction rise again a second time there will be no more pain amongst us no more shame amongst us no more reproach amongst us no more tears amongst us if any will cry it will be tears of joy no more losses in the name of jesus lord we declare there will be no more relegation no more delay lord we are declaring every door that causes pain shut in the name of jesus and we say there is an open of new doors an opening of new doors doors of progress doors of victory doors of testimonies doors of uncommon victory doors of reception doors of increase doors of fruitfulness doors of answers to prayers we say the doors are open today in the name of jesus i want you to lift up your hands and open your mouth and begin to speak with thanksgiving for the things you have been believing god for begin to receive them by faith with thanksgiving open your mouth begin to receive them by faith by faith the bible says whatsoever things you pray for or you desire when you pray believe you have received so by faith open your mouth and begin to receive it in the name of jesus come on the doors are wide open the doors are wide open the doors, wide open. The doors of divine healing the doors of the increase the doors of progress the doors of promotion the lord has opened it wide for you in this month of september the doors of rest the doors of fulfillment the lord has opened it on your behalf lift up your hands open your mouth and begin to declare that you're pulling them down pull it down in the name of jesus over your life your family your generation so we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you for answers to prayers oh god we thank you for fulfillment of prophecies we thank you because you are a good god we thank you that you are our strength we thank you that you are our bulwark you are our shield our shepherd you are the beacon of the night and the sunlight of our day we thank you that god you are our light in darkness we thank you that you are an ever-present help in times of need and we rejoice in you thank you our father now lift your hands and just give him a clap of thanksgiving come on do it by faith appreciate it hallelujah amen and amen praise the lord let me ask us to occupy our seats but you know how we do it no one sits behind everyone moves to the chairs ahead so let's quickly move quickly move and occupy the seats no one sits behind please so that even in case any person from behind will be coming we can have a bit of order and people can occupy in jesus name good afternoon to all of you good afternoon to all of you are you blessed to be in god's presence all right second corinthians chapter number four and verses number one second corinthians four and verses number one the scripture says that therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not i want us to read it together can we do that we only read in that verse alone are we ready okay let's take it together one to go therefore seeing uh-huh all right for the last time together uh-huh we faint not now the word ministry is not as it's not supposed to be complicated as people may put it uh, because the perspective of many people whenever we're dealing with ministry somebody be standing behind the pulpit and busy preaching to people winning souls praying over people and stuff like that which is a part of ministry but ministry is simply defined as service uh, but I want to give another aspect of its definition. Definition. Ministry is simply a divine deposit in a person. A divine deposit that God invests in an individual for a generation. So it's a deposit, but that deposit is divine. So God invests it. It's a divine deposit that God invests in a human being for the sake of a generation. 
Now, when you see that definition, then it begs or it brings the idea that every person therefore has this type of deposit. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 18. Proverbs 29 and verse number 18 says, where there's no vision, a people will perish. The what people there is a generation. So, which means any place where people do not begin to envision the future, have plans for their future, do not have a revelation from God concerning the burdens, he has purpose for them to carry out for the sake of a generation. Ultimately, that generation will end up perishing. Now, please, you must understand when you're a parent, you are called into ministry. I need an amen. When you're a son or a daughter, you're called into ministry. John chapter 1 and verses number 12. You can write it down. John 1 and verse 12 says, To all those that believed and received him, they were given the power to be called the sons. I underline the word sons there because it's a very important terminology. The word sons in the Greek is a word bena. And that word bena has a very interesting meaning. The word bena means the builder of the father's name or the builder of the father's house. So every person that is a son, of God. Every person that is born again and becomes a son has been given the ministry to build. And the building here is to advance the name of God. To advance the house of God. To advance the purposes of God. So remember, if ministry therefore is a divine deposit that God invests in an individual for a generation, then every one of us possesses that deposit. I need an amen right here. Now, what usually happens, that's why Paul opens his mouth, if you observe, he says, therefore, having received this ministry, he says one thing, we have now received mercy that we may not faint. So Paul knows that when ministry has been given to a person, the possibility of fainting is extremely high. All right? The probability of giving up, throwing in the towel, feeling like you are tired because of maybe the numerous warfares or the seasonal changes can constantly appear and it would end up making people throw in the towel. And the reasons are very simple. Number one, because of the weight of its responsibility. Whenever you discover what God has put in you, that weight can end up draining you because you are designed to carry a generation. I was talking to a particular uh, uh, person who is a parent and the lady was actually telling me how tired she is because life has battered her and yet she has children she needs to actually raise up by reason of this responsibility that she actually had she was finding it extremely difficult to be able to progress now please understand that if god gives you a deposit that weight of responsibility can automatically discourage you but god does something he gives you mercy he gives you mercy because he knows it is only mercy that can help you to carry out that work May you receive mercy today. Number two, the reason why that responsibility can also bring a lot of fainting is because of its demands. The demands. There is a weight behind it, but there are also demands behind everything that God gives to you. When God gives you a ministry or a deposit on the inside of you, there will be demands. The demands here we are talking about are consecration demands. Demands of holiness. Demands to live up to a certain standards. Demands to break through. You will feel a lot of demand coming upon your life. No one in this life ever wants to see their children going below a certain standard. Whatever you went through, your desire is that your children should do far much more better than you. I was joking with my daughter when taking her to high school and I began to tell her during our days, I started in St. Peter's Mumi as we lived in Nairobi and I remember my dad would give us 300 shillings as pocket money. Uh, so I was looking at her and I told her, now me, I used to be given 300. How much should I give you? 500. Don't you think it's enough? And I noticed she began to make noise. She was opening up her mouth and lamenting and I laughed. I said, this generation, honestly, you ought to plan to make sure you take care of them very well. The other day I was talking to uh, the ladies' ministry and while we were actually discussing with the leaders, uh, the ladies' leaders, we began to notice that there are things in the policy that is to be created that has to be attended to, more so in the generation we are in. And so we began to write down certain things. And one of them is, in this generation you must always be prepared. Uh, if a woman is pregnant, you do baby shower. Oh my God, we never had such. Uh, if a girl is about to get married, you do what? What do you call it? Bridal shower. So there's all man of shower. So a young man came to see me. And when the young man came to see me like this, he began to talk to me. And he began to tell me, Pastor, now we've dated with this lady for three years. So I came for advice. And one of the advice I'm seeking is that you may need to also teach me when I should propose. I said to myself, I don't remember when I did that. Amen. I mean, <laughs> you know, nowadays you have to have a drone. You know a drone? I hope I've not complicated. Uh -huh, okay. So you pull rings. You have a photographer hiding somewhere. You have, hey, Jesus. I said, this generation requires prayer. Some of us, it was kienyeji. Are you getting me? You simply say, I feel it is the will of God. It is finished. You know, but in this generation, there are very many complications. The demands have changed. 
Yeah. The demands are, am I in the right church today? The demands are very different. If you don't organize for one powerful ring, the, the sister will never be comfortable. If the proposal is not up to standard and the, pay, the, 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 the photos are not thrown on Facebook properly, the lady will feel so discouraged. So there is a demand we have. Oh no, I know I'm talking to somebody. Tell your neighbor those demands, God will give you mercy. Look at the other one. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, he will give you mercy to meet the demands. Whether you're doing ministry, even physically, there are demands. There is a way when you do ministry nowadays, you can't just do it below a certain standard. Years ago, you would preach under a tree. There would be no problem. Nowadays, if you do, you will be considered mad. I mean, it doesn't mean that there is any relegation behind it. It's not a weakness. But to some extent, certain standards have been set. So to some extent, even doing church with some curtains that look like, are you getting me? Uh, towels for the bathroom. It, it doesn't work. They are things that automatically change. I remember the time we began to do videos. We were back in country lodge. And uh, the moment we started to do videos in church, and we had very nice curtains. We spent a lot of money to get those curtains. I remember we had to go to Isili in Nairobi. Had to organize. We bought them over 10,000. And knew we had some of the finest curtains. The natural eye would look at them. And my God, they were powerful. But when we got video camera, I remember at one time there was a brother uh, who was called Zemira who began to shoot. When you would watch the clip, then you would understand. The natural eye, what it sees, and the video camera, what it sees, are two different things. Then it gives you the idea that when you go online, you have to know how to behave. You know, somebody was saying that we need to teach pastors how to behave when you're online. Never put on the same dress every day because they will notice. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Uh, yeah, never repeat a revelation. They will notice. So in other words, many things changed even last year. And the point I'm saying here is that that aspect of the burdens God puts in you places demands on you. And those demands can automatically drain you. Number three, the third reason is because the ministry God puts in you, why you need mercy, is because every deposit comes with warfare. Every deposit comes with warfare. Some of the battles you are facing today is because of that deposit. Just when Jesus was still a, 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 supposed to be born, the moment Herod got to hear that Jesus is about to be born, listen to the words he said. He told the three kings that if you will find the baby, come back and tell me. And yet he was already plotting to kill the small child. A child was a threat to a king. So if a child was a threat to a king, what about you? What you carry always threatens the enemy. Some of the battles you see, some of it is not generational. Some of it is deposit oriented. What you have in you, in the future it is supposed to unlock, will affect many people. And so Satan will do anything to stop you because you have already lived up until now. So what is to unfold is bigger than what we have seen in the past. The true you has not been revealed. The most powerful you has not yet been known. The grace you truly carry has not yet been revealed. Look at you. You are bigger than what you see. Let no man lie to you that you are where you are. Every one of you seated here can tell that there is a potential burning of the inside of you and telling you you are more than where you are. Yes, you are. Some years ago, I remember I went to preach somewhere. And I remember when I was going to preach, something happened. And while I was rolling on the bed and began, began to cry, the Holy Ghost gave me that revelation which I had one man of God once quote. How people labor like elephants and they eat like ants. I remember when that thing hit me, I stood up from my bed. I shouted, the devil is a liar. I said, Lord, I will never labor like an elephant and eat like an ant. That is a lie. And there are many of you that feel you are an elephant stuck in a hole. And you are eating things that are not equal to your ability. That's why you need mercy. The wars should be indicators that the deposit in you is calling you to greatness. Oh, I wish I had a better amen right here. A child is born and the moment is born, the name is called Moses. But in the same season, the devil can smell greatness is about to appear. That a deliverer is about to emerge to deliver the children of Israel. So Pharaoh makes a decision. Children under the age of two, let them all be slaughtered. That if a male child will be born, let them all be killed. But mercy preserved Moses. Mercy made sure that the baby who was born helpless and could not be able to support himself, mercy kept him alive. Mercy will keep you alive here today. I said mercy will keep you alive here today. You know, every time I read the book of Exodus chapter 2, I laugh. Because number three factors that make me laugh. Number one, male children cry for milk more and are more, more emotional than female children when they are born. 
When a male child is born, the demand for milk is higher. When a female child is born, they may not be as active. Now, sometimes it can be different, but in a majority, male children naturally always place a lot of demands. They will demand more milk. They are more sensitive. And so to hide a male child for three months from people who are ever coming into your house and they cannot see him, it is mercy. Yes, it is. God has been hiding you. Your season of manifestation is coming. You have not died. You should have died two years ago. Look at you. You're still alive. Some of you even probably wrote a suicide note or thought you wanted to run away and give up. But something kept you alive and preserved you in Eldoret. Oh, it is called mercy. That same God who kept you. I feel like I'm releasing a declaration on somebody. That same God who kept you has not kept you to survive. He has been preserving you to manifest. The Bible says that God kept a man called John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1 and verse 80. That God hid John the Baptist all throughout his life until his day of manifestation. That God who has been keeping you alive. Kept your head sober and still between your shoulders. And not allowed you to die has an agenda. He has been hiding you for a season. You know, I feel like I'm preaching to three people right here. God is about to manifest here. So listen to me carefully. Moses, when born as a male child, he would have been noticed. But mercy hid him. Number two, not only did mercy hid him, the mother saw something in the child. I don't know what you see in yourself. But what you see in yourself determines how, how hard you will fight for what you have. People that don't believe in who they are and what they carry rarely go far. You must be convinced of who you are. Yes. There is a pride that is permitted. That pride is a pride of self-belief in terms of believing in what God has put in you. You never convince if you're not convicted. You can't convince me of something you don't believe in. If you believe it when you open your mouth once, we will all believe it. No, I need an amen right here. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? You must believe in what you carry. Could you ask your neighbor, what do you carry? Come on, let them hear your voice. Ask them again, neighbor, what do you carry? Can you give them an answer? Tell them this is what I carry. Some of you are not even convincing. Now turn to the other one that looks convincing like you are. Tell them, ask them, neighbor, what do you carry? What do you carry? Yes. That is why that thing has had warfare. Every day the devil has been setting a battle against your head. Uh -uh, he believes it. If Satan believes it, you must believe it. If Satan is attacking, it means he's very convinced you are bigger than you think you are. Imagine you haven't even touched 10,000 yet. You are still struggling to pay rent for 2,000 and Satan is still harassing you. It means he believes in you. <laughs> he believes in you. You are still on the 2,000 level and you are always saying, oh God, oh God. Satan is attacking you every day. It means Satan is so convinced that where you are, you are bigger. If the devil can be convinced, you must be convinced. You are a millionaire. It's just for a season you are stuck in 2000. You must be convinced. Whenever you look at yourself, if the enemy keeps on hitting you at night, gives you a strange dream. Every day throwing an attack. If the devil and his cohorts are convinced, then I'm here to tell you, you too must wake up and remind yourself, I know I am worth something. Because the devil doesn't attack everything and everyone. I am worth something. I carry a prize on me. I wish I was preaching to somebody here. If everyone at work is attacking you, everyone around where you live is attacking you, people who you think should be standing with you even in your church, then it must show you that there is something on you. Not everything about you is a problem. There are things in you that reveal your worth and your value. If the devil believes it, then you must believe it. Believe it. Believe that you are more than a conqueror. Not everyone is attacked. You are valuable. Slap three of your neighbors. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, believe. Believe in what you carry. Very quickly in the next 10 minutes, I want to share with you so that five minutes we will do prayer. On actions you can engage to obtain this mercy and to activate this mercy. Can we get into it? Please if you hear me shout, I hear you. Remember the theme of this focus of these seven days is mercy. And God is releasing it on the behalf of his people. Number one, action number one, Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12. Hosea 10 and verse number 12. The Bible is very clear. It says, so to yourself in righteousness. So action number one is the action of practicing righteousness. The action of practicing righteousness. Now practicing righteousness is not just practicing holiness. Righteousness is simply principles 
All right. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. That means his actions of doing things. His principles. So there is a base level God has ordained for everyone to work around. So when we are talking about righteousness, Hosea 10 and verse 12, what God is telling you to do, part of the way you trigger mercy is whenever you constantly practice the principles he avails to you. So in Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12 again, Hosea 10 and verse 12, it says, Sow to yourself in righteousness, so that you may reap mercy. Listen, to trigger God's attention, there must be an action of obedience. I want to repeat it again. To trigger God's attention, there must be an action of obedience. Part of the reason sometimes we do not arouse God's mercy or arouse the attention of God is that we are ever working things by ourselves and not responding to his own directions. God wants to show you mercy, but God cannot bless you where he never called you. God can never favor you where he never summoned you to. God never sponsors what he never began. You must train yourself to ever be a practitioner of his principles. If God will show you financial mercy, choose to become a practitioner of tithing. That's a principle for finances. If God will ever bless you in terms of your destiny, every principle aligned in scripture, pick it up, sow it to yourself, and God will constantly show you mercy because God favors what belongs to him. Yes, he does. So don't give up. Go back to the practice. Whoever you are, you have been growing weary. Maybe financially you're saying, I can't tithe anymore because I have too many bills. I have loans every day to pay. So I cannot be able to pay my tithe. I can't pray because I feel like I'm too tired. Listen, I want to encourage you. Go back. Receive grace to go back. I said again, receive grace to go back. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Sow to yourself in righteousness. And what will you do? You will reap in mercy. In other words, it's a place God himself will carry you because he knew you were practicing what he called you to. I have always told people, the first car I ever drove, I actually was so aggressive to God and I told God, God clearly, if you actually call me to Eldred, there's one request I will ask of you. That if you summon me here, my request is simple. Let this proof, I mean, let a proof be given to me by you blessing me with a vehicle from the same land you call me to. I mean, every likelihood of me getting a car from out of Eldoret was appearing. I could see cars coming from outside. But I told God, God, one of the ways that I know you have called me here is that I want to receive a blessing from here. And indeed, God had to honor that prayer. Because if God plants you somewhere, he has to favor you. Please, I want to encourage you. Go back to practice righteousness. Go back. Practice prayer again. Pray again. Don't give up on praying. Go to church. Don't give up on going to church. Return back to the fellowship. Don't give up on returning back to the fellowship. Reconnect with the brethren. I wish I'm talking to somebody right here. Whatever God called you to practice as a principle, do it. In the it is mercy. Sow to yourself and you will reap mercy. I know you have fasted many times. I know you have prayed many times. And I know you can give me a book and tell me, Pastor, you don't know for how many years I've fasted. I am tired, but I want to let you know. The Bible says, growing not weary. In well-doing, when a woman is giving birth, the most painful time is the moment the head is crowning. To crown means when the head is now manifesting. That's the time that is worst in all pain. But that's the time the miracle is already manifesting. Whoever you are, may you receive strength. Go back to pray again. Receive the grace to obey his word. Whoever you are, whatever was weakening you, I command you to receive strength again. You will practice prayer. You will practice righteousness. You will practice communion. You will practice fellowship. You will practice giving. You will practice whatever the enemy uses. I break it off of your life. If you receive it, shout aloud, amen. No matter how many people have caused you to be bitter, don't become bitter because of them. Practice love. The fact that others did evil should not make you do the same. You are called to be a different person. They made you angry, they rejected you. That doesn't mean that is your life. One person one day woke up. The lady said, Pastor, me, I don't trust any man because of what they have done to me. I looked at the lady, I told the lady, the fact that one did doesn't mean all people are wicked. The lady received what I said. Not long after that, the Lord blessed her with a man that literally changed her life. There is a God who can show you mercy. Hey, I feel like shouting here. I said, there is a God who can
can show you mercy keep on walking on that road no matter what is happening let it be that God finds you practicing 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 when God sees that God says I like this boy you know I told you about Abraham Abraham was not a perfect brother everyone calls him the father of faith he had mistakes my friend Abraham rejected the wife twice that brother had issues that is not faith that is fear Abraham slept with the house gun now that is not even anything it's called a prayer item and deliverance that is required Abraham went even to higher levels he committed all manner of issues but this God never gave up on him do you know why because he still kept on walking with God God would say arise walk he would keep on following and God says I like him his obedience is accounted to him as a righteousness so because of that God still gave him mercy keep on practicing listen to me everyone has a story to tell you some of you may look at your neighbors or even some of us here and may think we don't have war we do but mercy has made us not to faint we know that we are carriers of something and we choose to keep on practicing because mercy will manifest its answer oh I feel like I'm preaching to somebody number two the second thing is sow the seeds of mercy to other people the second way you activate that mercy is by sowing it in other people's life matthew 5 and verse number 7 and today we are going to release that atmosphere on you i feel a recovery coming on somebody here i said again i feel a recovery coming on somebody here i don't know who you are but there are two people the lord told me you felt like giving up that thing dies it has been broken whoever you are receive it in the name of jesus hey i feel like shouting right here matthew 5 7 says matthew 5 and verse 7 not verse 10 verse 7 blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain so in other words show other people kindness show them understanding listen the fact that somebody next to you is struggling doesn't mean they are cast sometimes they are in a process showing them understanding and telling them i will stand with them is also provoking your own mercy that's why when you're discouraged don't behave like it's as though you're the only one the entire world has to focus on everyone has to be calling you oh, Polly, Polly, Polly. if you behave like that honestly you're a serious prayer item a majority of times it's as though the pastor should be preaching a message called Polly. are you understanding me Polly. Polly, Polly. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, pastors, we see things. Huh? I like the picture where they usually so show a particular man who is encouraging a lady. The lady ha only has one knife on the back. Have you ever seen that cartoon? One knife on the back. And the brother has several daggers on his own. <laughs> listen to me let me encourage you the bible says in the book of job 32 that when job prayed for his friends then god turned his captivity in your discouragement and disappointment switch sometimes and make others your prayer point so mercy to others if you're struggling with some level of rent and probably yours is 20,000 and you're not yet getting, try and get somebody who is struggling with 2,000 pull the two and give it to them you are answering his prayer and you will cause God to answer yours. Learn to be a person who can answer somebody else's prayer. Everyone, a brother walked into my office and when he walked in after I told him, come, I want us to talk. I want to know what your debt is. The guy walked in, if you saw his face, oh my God, he looked like he was about to die and we needed to prepare a typical lawyer burial ceremony is about to appear. Have you ever seen those professional cries? I mean, I was, a guy just walked in. He said, Pastor, he could buy this. 20,000, the guy looked like he was dying just five minutes after he left the next one i had called to write a list of the debts he had walked in he put it on a piece of paper when i looked at his own and the guy never looked like he had problems i told him close your eyes let's pray if you saw the debt it was seven million he did not look like he was dying have you ever seen people that look like they have money you should ask them and they are those ones who at a distance you just walk away you know <laughs> this one is waha wahala are you understanding me <laughs> learn to sow mercy from today change your prayer pray for others for once plant a seed to others yes while we give in church look for other people to bless look for other people to encourage please let me hear an amen if we can do that in church we will have a lot of freshness people will be more renewed because you are coming excited you are not just waiting for you are depositing to others i need a better amen right here so you are not the center of everyone's attention no you are sowing seeds 
to others. Please let me hear an amen. Hosea chapter 6 and verse number 6. We will close in a short while. Hosea 6 and verse 6. Listen to what God is speaking in this scripture. In Hosea 6 and verse 6. And that's why again I will provoke. Today we will sow a seed. He says, for I have desired. God is the one who is speaking. I have desired mercy, not sacrifice. And then he says, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. So God is saying, what I desire from you is to show mercy to other people. What I want to see from you, begin to extend a hand. Let me say this. If you know what you carry, then in your small level, start practicing it. It is as though you're there. Mark me. I can never preach to you a gospel that is below what I see in my future. Never. If your heads will not get it, I will still preach it because somebody else will get it. I can never relegate really myself to look like what I can't, no matter what. I know I've not shaved. I was actually looking at myself. That one is, is by intention. Are you understanding me? I know I look like prophet of war, but God is helping me. You know, one day I met my mom and my mom began to tell me, now I knew she was about to quote prophet of war. Thank God my brother was there to defend me. Amen. So I told mom, no, you know, there's a style called Goti. You understand Goti? Yeah. I said, my vision is to become like one prophet. Pastor Ken was asking me, uh, called, uh, what was his name? Dano the Ambo. Amen. I want one long one. Amen. Hallelujah. But listen, what I'm just simply trying to say, I want us to sow a seed. Can we do that? Stand up on your feet. Let's pray. There are two others, but I don't have time to give it because I want us to use this few minutes to pray. Are you ready to pray together with me? Come on, if you can hear me say, I hear you. Job chapter 32, let's go there. Uh, let me give you this scripture, then we pray. I feel somebody who already has a release. 42, sorry, 42. 42, I'm just giving it to you right now. Verse 10, 42 verse 10. So let's read this scripture. Are we ready? If you already say, I hear you. Want to go? And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I want you to pray. Lift up your hands as we're standing. Say, Heavenly Father, I choose to sow a seed of mercy to those that require mercy. Wherever they are, I sow a seed through this prayer in the name of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth. Pray for somebody you know. Pray for a ministry. Even for this ministry, I want you to sow a seed. Pray for a marriage. Pray for a couple. Pray for individuals, for somebody's child. Pray for a generation. Open your mouth and just begin to raise a prayer. Sow a seed. Sow a seed. You know the way you usually pray loud whenever you're praying for yourself? I want you to bless somebody else. Bless somebody else, a family member, a parent, a brother, a sister, a pastor, a friend, a colleague, a neighbor. Uh, open your mouth and just begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray. A brother in the church, a sister in the church. Come on, don't be stingy. Don't be stingy. The way you usually pray for yourself. Open your mouth, lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm sowing a seed. Pray for business people that have been struggling. Pray for people that have been believing God, that God should be able to answer them. Come on, lift up your hands. Some of you are too stingy with your prayer. Lift your hands, open your mouth. And I want to see somebody open up their mouth in prayer. Oh, Mazon de Lecaria Boshalaba Cantelebe, Masoka Tali Caramo, Mantoli Cari Masoka. Father, we speak of the marriages, we speak of the families, we speak of the children, we speak of the ministries, we speak of the individuals, people that have been weeping and crying, people that have been broken, oh God, people that felt like giving up, we pray that God, your mercy would be extended to them. We pray, Father, that you will help people that are believing you to open their doors, people that are believing you to wipe away their shame, people that are living in the gutters, people that are living in places, Lord of great reproach people that do not feel like they can make it oh God we sow a seed toward them we pray extending this prayer of mercy toward them in the name of Jesus and father we believe that you will help them help them oh God help that pastor help that pastor help that man of God help that woman oh God in the name of Jesus father we release our faith and we thank you my father because as we pray you are extending mercy to us as we pray you are extending mercy to us as 
as we pray you are extending mercy to us as we pray you are extending mercy to us thank you that you are a help to the helpless thank you that you are a strength to the strengthless thank you that you are a peace giver to those that are troubled oh god we sow a seed now lift your hands i want you to pray over yourself say every warfare uh, come on every warfare surrounding me because of what i carry say you will not finish me mercy will speak for me mercy will speak for me i will not die i will not give up i will not grow weary i will not faint by mercy i arise again i am revived again i am restored again i am strengthened again now i want you to open your mouth command strength in the area where you are feeling weak in the area where the enemy has been hitting hard on you open your mouth and pray for yourself pray over your prayer life pray over your destiny pray over your life in the name of jesus marshall La meto li kanda la bosha, ye pronde le kadi masoka, ye bosha laka, ye proshe da baka, ye tanika tolika, ye porikanda la ba. My God, we pray over the financial battles we've had, battles in our families, battles of our children, battles, oh God, that have risen against our destinies. We summon mercy, we summon mercy, we summon mercy, and by mercy we are receiving strength. Strength to believe again, strength to pray again, strength to stay holy again, strength to practice righteousness again. We are receiving you today. Oh, blessed be your name. Lift your hands, just pray in the Holy Ghost. We are closing. Pray in the Holy Ghost as you lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Strength is coming to somebody here. I feel some oil on somebody's head. God is releasing fresh oil. Confusion. The spirit of confusion leaves somebody here. The spirit of confusion is leaving you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now I want you to give God a clap. Don't do it religiously. From the depth of your heart with understanding, clap to God. Come on, clap to God. In Jesus' name. In Titus chapter number 1 and verse number 2, and 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 4, we see mercy spread through apostolic prayer. When Paul spoke of Titus and Paul spoke of Timothy, he would end up extending that grace, mercy, and peace over my sons. I want to extend an apostolic prayer over your life. That mercy will speak for you. Are you ready to receive it? As I stretch my hands towards you, I speak the mercy of God. Mercy will preserve you. Mercy will keep you. Mercy will give you victory. Mercy will strengthen you. I exercise the scriptures and I declare you will not faint. By mercy, the battles you have had are brought to an end. And by mercy, you are rising to your season. By mercy, your victory is opening up. By mercy, your doors are opened up. By mercy, your rest has now come to pass. Receive it by this apostolic prayer. Receive it by this apostolic prayer. If you receive it, I need a shout of amen and amen and amen. Time is just limiting me. I'm past time a little, but we thank God. Please, I want to ask you. If you would really just strive to join us, we've been having a very powerful time in the evening at 5.30, come for prayers. You can come earlier, we do prayers, and we finish at exactly 6.30. Yesterday we finished at 35 minutes past 6. So I want you to come, be a part of what God is doing. Are you understanding me? Uh, yeah, take this time. We are doing a seven-day fasting. We are finishing on Sunday. I really request you to be a part of it. Tomorrow, which is Saturday, I've asked everyone because these days we want to maximize them. And we use these through corporate prayer. So we are going to be gathering tomorrow at 2 o'clock exactly. 2 o'clock. And Sunday we climax again with a communion service. It will be powerful as we make declarations. Is that okay? So please let me invite you. Make sure you're part of this. I want to bless your offering. I want you to extend a seed and sow into this ministry. 
Remember, if you're using the MPS, the details are there. So quickly get your offering and let me speak a blessing over it. And even if you don't have an offering, you will just lift your hand. I want to bless it. Now, that doesn't mean that you just lift your hand. You believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you have your offerings ready? Raise them before heaven. Even if you don't have, part of the way you believe God is by that. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may the God who is able to extend financial favor, extend it to you. He owns gold and silver and he will pass it on to you. To all that are sowing seed, may God bless it. To all those that are in faith, may God put it in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The basket is on the right and on the left. Quickly come. You can drop it 5.30. Let's meet. If you're watching us, the details are streaming below the screen. You can utilize those details to go ahead and also sow your seed. And please also join us at 5.30. If you're an eldred, come. Let's be a part of what God is doing in Jesus' name. God bless you all.